Hi friends, Nathan here, and today we're talking about bad habits. Uh, now I'm gonna be honest, I am gonna pick on you a little bit, uh, but we're all in this together. I've had bad habits that I never knew were bad habits until my teacher told me they were bad habits, and if my teacher never told me they were bad habits, I would've never known they were bad habits. <sighs> uh, <laughs> if this video uncovers a bad habit that you're guilty of and didn't even realize, don't worry, I've been there, I'm here for you and I'll help you correct course. Uh, but real quick, do me a favor, scroll down, hit the like button and leave a comment letting me know a bad habit that you have or have had and what steps, if any, did you take or are you taking to fix it? I see this first habit all the time and every single time that I point it out to somebody, they didn't realize that they were doing it. Uh, now, instead of just telling you what the habit is, cause that's plain boring, I'm going to play a passage for you correctly first, and then again with the bad habit, and I wanna see if you pick up on it. Now again, listen carefully. Did you catch what I was doing in that second playthrough? Once you hear it, you really can't unhear it. I was rolling every single chord. So many guitarists are guilty of rolling every chord by default without even thinking twice about it. And uh, now it seems innocent enough, but there are two main reasons why this is such a bad habit. Number one, uh, your rhythm by nature is just gonna sound more sloppy, right? You never get a chance to hear a definitive pulse when that chord strikes, right? Everything just starts to sound kind of mushy. And two, rolling every chord takes what makes rolling a chord special and wastes that potential. Uh, I love Dr. Pepper, right? If I drank Dr. Pepper all day, every day, it would become commonplace and no longer special. I mean, I'd probably still love it, but that's beside the point. My point is rolling chords is an effect to be used strategically. It's meant to draw attention to certain chords in contrast to the more definitive and punchy sound of a plucked chord. And if it's used more sparingly, you can create these special moments in your music by choosing which chords you want to stand out above the rest with a chord roll. Now, if you realize that you tend to get a little crazy with the chord rolls, my good news for you is that this is an easy fix. Uh, it just comes down to awareness and planning. Uh, so go through the piece that you're currently learning or arranging and literally pick out each chord that you're gonna roll and each chord that you're not. Now be really selective here and only choose the chords that you really wanna highlight with that effect because rolled chords should be in the minority. This second bad habit I dealt with for years without knowing that there was a better way. Uh, it wasn't until I was halfway through my undergraduate degree in classical guitar performance that a professor brought it to my attention. Uh, now I'm talking about fretting notes by squeezing against the back of the neck with your thumb. We've all experienced this one, especially like bar chords or big stretches where we treat our fingers and thumb like a vice grip on the neck, just trying to get enough pressure to make sure that every note rings out properly. Now this is such a dangerous habit because it impacts your ability or inability to keep your hand relaxed while you're playing. Now unnecessary tension can uh, negatively affect your capacity for speed, uh, your ability to reach big stretches, and ultimately it can cause injuries. A lot of guitarists, young Nathan included, uh, just assume that this is a part of guitar playing, that some chord shapes and positions require you to squeeze against the neck. Um, and we just hope that one day our fingers and hands and thumbs will strengthen up enough to the point where it doesn't hurt anymore. Um, in fact, I've heard a lot of teachers actually teach exactly that, uh, but there is a better way and it relies on leveraging the weight and pull of your arm. You can see here, this is what you don't want. My thumb is locked out and my muscle down here is tight. Uh, I can already start feeling the pain and fatigue building up. So what you wanna do is let your arm hang as essentially dead weight. 
and use gravity and the weight of your arm to pull the strings into the frets, keeping your thumb relaxed on the back of the neck. So this is one of the advantages of sitting in this classical position with the elevated neck. Gravity can work in our favor, so it feels like our hand is literally just hanging on the neck. Uh, now in scenarios where you might need a little extra pressure than the weight of your arm provides, uh, like bar chords, pull back with your entire arm, driving your elbow backwards to pull the strings tighter against the frets. Uh, this is better than squeezing with your thumb because you're engaging your bicep muscle, which has a lot more strength and stamina than your thumb, and uh, you won't feel that tension or pain building up here nearly as quickly. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that this is an easy change to make. I wrestled with this for a long time, but I promise you, this is a habit that's worth breaking. To be able to play and not feel like your hand is always on the verge of cramping, uh, it just makes playing more enjoyable and more importantly, helps prevent seriously unpleasant injuries. This last habit is something that you might be aware of, but have maybe turned a deaf ear to, and that is string squeaking. So when we shift or slide on a wound string, we hear this squeaking sound that we've, we've all heard before. Um, now, some of you might say that this doesn't bother you, uh, but I would argue that you're probably just used to it. Uh, and I mean, you really can't deny that this is just objectively a horrible, horrible sound. As humans, we have this amazing ability to tune out sounds that we're constantly being subjected to. Uh, and as guitarists, we tend to write off string squeaks as just an unavoidable part of the guitar's mechanics. Uh, but I would encourage you to think about the non-guitarists out there that you might be playing for. I'll always remember this. After my first concert in college, uh, where all the classical guitar majors took turns playing one piece each, uh, somebody from the audience came up to me and said that they enjoyed my performance the most. Um, now they didn't mention anything about my technical proficiency, uh, cause I'm sure it wasn't that impressive. Um, they didn't mention my tone or my musicality. The one thing that they brought up that made my performance stand out above the rest to them was that I didn't make any of those squeaky sounds. That really stuck with me because this was somebody who was not a guitar player and wasn't familiar with the guitar's mechanics. And so to them, string squeaks were really distracting and sounded like mistakes. So we need to consider our audience and remember the fact that they might not be able to tune out string squeaks as easily as we can. And that can be really uh, distracting and can take away from what would otherwise be a very beautiful performance and an, and an experience for them. Two things you need to do to kick this habit. Uh, first, start recording yourself immediately. I could do an entire video on the benefits of recording yourself alone, uh, but one of the things that it does is it makes you hyper aware of all the little details in your playing uh, because you can go back and listen over and over without the distractions of, of the physical act of playing. Record yourself with whatever equipment you have available, your, your phone, anything, and listen to how much string squeaking you hear. Uh, now after doing this, I've had students ask me how they can prevent their mics from amplifying the string squeaks. And uh, because they're noticeably louder in the recording itself. Um, now, certain mics will amplify certain details and there are techniques to, to minimize that. But the main reality here is that you're hearing string squeaks that were always there, just mostly ignored in the moment of playing. So being aware of your string squeaks is the first step. Start listening to when and where they're happening, and then we can talk about how you can get rid of them, uh, which is really not that complicated. You just need to be more careful with your finger movements across the strings. To get rid of those squeaks, you just need to train yourself to lift your finger or fingers off of the wound strings before initiating the shift. So I lift up, then over. Uh, if you have other fingers simultaneously on other non-wound strings, you don't necessarily have to worry about lifting those depending on the scenario because they don't squeak. Listen to how much cleaner this sounds.
Each shift takes a little more effort to make quick and smooth this way, but it's worth it to get rid of those squeaks. Um, now, some of you might have heard of special recording strings that are designed to minimize string squeaks, uh, but I would avoid jumping straight there as a solution. We never want to be in a position where we're relying completely on equipment to compensate for what we lack in good technique. Now that we made it through all three of these bad habits, I want you to revisit the comment section below and update me on whether or not you can relate to any of these. Um, and if you can, please don't feel discouraged. Uh, instead, I would encourage you in the fact that you are not alone, right? Guitar playing a lot of times can feel like a very lonely endeavor and, and sometimes we can feel like we're alone in the aspects of our guitar playing that we're struggling with. But I'd go as far as saying that every guitarist, myself included, has struggled or is currently struggling with one or more of these concepts. So hang in there, look at it as an opportunity to grow as a guitarist and you will be all the better for it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to let me know and to help more people see it. Uh, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on so you never miss future videos. Uh, and as always, much love, and I'll see you in the next one.